Have you ever imagined creating worlds just like the ones in your favorite games and movies? Well, today it has never been easier to do just that thanks to huge advances in powerful free software like Blender and Unreal Engine 5, growing content libraries like Megascans, Polyhaven, and Kitbash 3D, as well as the tools and plugins that multiply what you can achieve with each program and library. In today's video, I want to introduce you to one of those tools, which is really a set of tools and has completely transformed how I'm able to build much bigger environments in Unreal Engine 5 in a fraction of the time it used to take. But before we get to that tool, I want to give some context that will help illustrate just how powerful and game changing it is. Because when it comes to building worlds, whether you're a solo creator or a large studio, we all face the same three constraints time, cost, and quality. Choosing which of these variables to optimize for is really project dependent, and though there will always be a degree of trade-off within this triangular relationship, having to compromise one to maximize the others will always be seen as less than ideal because everyone would prefer to create something faster with the highest quality and for the lowest cost. And because of that, both creators and studios are always looking for ways not only to optimize this relationship, but to gain leverage over all three variables, and by doing so to expand the area that they encompass overall. In world building, for example, you can gain this leverage by developing and adopting better tools that automate and speed up the process, allowing each artist to create bigger, higher quality worlds in less time. Many studios use the same tools that you and I do, Unreal Engine, Maya, and Blender, but they often have teams dedicated to developing their own tools on top of them that are able to automate tasks and give their artists increased control that helps them create more efficiently. These tools are often proprietary to each studio. They're built up over many years and can get to the point where they make their original software almost unrecognizable to regular users. However, despite these tools being locked behind closed doors, a look at any Houdini games reel can give you an idea of what this might look like in practice. Here's a good example of Ubisoft showing off some of these tools they built using Houdini which really helped their artists create the huge world of Far Cry 5 way faster than was possible at the time. The catch here is that while this gives artists leverage within the world building process itself, it also takes time to develop these tools in the first place. So even though Houdini and now Blender with geometry nodes allows creators to develop their own tools and reusable node networks, many artists end up specializing either in building tools or in using them because in the end there's only so much time in the day. Fortunately, and getting to the focus of this video, for those of you in that latter group who are just interested in building worlds and environments, there is now a huge toolset available for Unreal Engine 5 that I've been testing out over the past few weeks. And Frankly, I have fallen in love with it and can't imagine using Unreal without it at this point. So finally, I'd like to introduce you to Dash, a set of tools for Unreal created by Polygon Flow, a company based in Sweden just a few hours from where I live here in Oslo. But before we dive into a few of my favorite features of Dash that are giving me more leverage over the world building process, I want to quickly mention three resources I've created alongside this video. First, because Dash is a huge toolset, I'll only be highlighting a few of its coolest features here. However, over the next few weeks, I'll be releasing a full playlist of beginner-friendly tutorials on how to use all of its core features to build your own world. So make sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos as they drop. Second, in addition to these Dash tutorials, if you're new to Unreal and world building or if you feel stuck in an endless cycle of random tutorials, make sure to check out the 3D art curriculum that I released a few months ago. This curriculum is designed to save you thousands of hours and dollars on your path to becoming a 3D artist and world builder. After investing over three years and $25,000 in my own game art education, I sat down and created this curriculum to guide future students through that same learning path that I heavily invested in at top schools like Think Tank, Nomen and CGMA, but instead of having to spend thousands of dollars and enrolling in countless programs, courses, and tutorials like I did, this curriculum instead gives you a carefully curated learning plan of the best and free tutorials and courses from around the web that mirrors how I would go about learning 3D and world building if I were starting over today. It's completely free and you can join the hundreds of students who have already enrolled, again with a link in the description. 
Lastly, because I was so taken with Dash, I invited the founder to feature as my first guest on the Future Familiar podcast, where we broke down his journey from a student watching online tutorials back in his home country of Mauritania to creating and selling his first tools for Autodesk Maya and how that landed him an opportunity to move to Sweden and work at Quixel itself. From there, Adnan walks me through the emotional journey of choosing to leave Quixel at the height of its popularity just as it was being acquired by Epic to instead go and launch his own company along with the many ups and downs of what it was like building and growing Polygon Flow from nothing to what it is today. We also close the episode with a candid discussion about the future of digital art as we see it and advice for new artists trying to break into the industry today where he shares some incredibly inspirational and very practical advice, so I encourage you to stick around till the end for that. I'll link that episode at the end of this video and in the description for those interested in taking a listen. Okay, cool. So with that out of the way, let's dig into how Dash is already completely transforming my world building process in four specific ways. The first thing that Dash does relates back to the intro of this video when I mentioned those growing content libraries in that it gives me access to them right inside of Unreal. For example, though Megascans and Polyhaven, two of the most popular libraries, of course have dedicated apps and websites, when you're creating a world, having their assets just one or two clicks away right inside of Unreal really speeds up the process. Dash also takes this access a step further by using the latest version of GPT to tag these assets in these libraries so that when you're searching for them, you can do so in a much more natural way than just having to guess what the original asset title was when they named it. The second thing Dash is helping me with is to help build more realistic worlds. And I don't mean fidelity or quality wise, but a huge part of world building is really just placing things across the scene in a way that feels realistic. Unreal does have built in tools for distributing things like foliage and something more recently called PCG, which is their procedural content generation framework. However, in reality, the foliage tool is limited and PCG is incredibly complex for beginners in its current state. In contrast, Dash brings a completely new level of control and simplicity. For example, you can easily scatter meshes, decals, create complex border masks to control them further, or even use physics to drop things naturally throughout the scene. This type of scattering and placement was something I always struggled with when I was starting out because for one, it's really slow to place everything manually, and two, I always really got in my head about whether something looked realistic because it didn't feel like it had that randomness that you so often see in the natural world. The third thing is that Dash makes complex, time-consuming things really quick and simple. For example, if you've ever wanted to create a road or to grow some vines on an object or maybe to hang some cables between buildings, these are all tasks that sound really simple and easy in theory, but in practice, for anyone who's tried it, you've realized it requires a lot of manual work or to leverage some sort of complex node-based system built in a software like Houdini and then to interact with it through a plugin into Unreal. Now, of course, it's completely feasible for a tech artist to build that system or with someone with a lot of time on their hands to just do it piece by piece. But Dash comes with solutions for some of these most common tasks with just a prompt and a few clicks that anyone can use regardless of how technical they are. The fourth and final way that Dash is helping me that we'll touch on in this intro video is that it's really helping me level up the look of my scene in a couple cool ways. A few of my favorites are how easy it is to drag some fog cards into the scene for a bit of atmosphere or to make lights look much more unique through an embedded set of prefabbed IES point lights, which if you aren't familiar with what IES profiles are, they essentially take a clean, typical look of a light in Unreal and shape it in a much more realistic way based on real world measured data. Many manufacturers of lights provide this data for free online, which you can search around for import into Unreal and then attach to a light, but Dash makes it super easy by embedding a library of them already attached to basic point lights in Unreal. So that whenever you want to create a much more interesting look than the standard lights that ship with Unreal, you can just scroll through the different IES profiles and drag and drop them into your scene. And speaking of drag and drop, they even have a bit of a hidden feature where 
When you're working on the post-processing and look of your scene, you can simply drag in an image from a game or a movie or a photograph and it will extract the color grading and apply it directly to your scene, which I think is a pretty cool trick. So yeah, with that, we will wrap up this basic intro video to Dash. This just scratches the surface of what's possible with it. We'll cover a lot more in that intro series I mentioned. If you want to learn how to get started actually using some of these and the many other features it includes, again, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss that series I'll be dropping throughout the next few weeks. All of the videos will be completely beginner friendly, so even if you have only a very basic understanding of how to navigate around an Unreal, I'll still have you covered. And just to mention again, as I continue to build out those videos, you can already take a listen to that podcast episode I had mentioned with Adnan, the founder of Dash, which should be popping up on the screen in a moment or is available down in the description. Though on a personal note, before you click through to that, I just wanted to express to you all that creative podcasts have always held a special place in my heart. For years, podcasts like The Collective Podcast by Ash Thorpe or Mache's Art Cafe have fueled my creative growth and journey, and it was a fun challenge to try to capture some of that same energy and feelings those podcasts gave me and to channel it back into this first episode, but instead as a host. So as I work to get my feet under me interviewing guests, I'd love to get your thoughts on how this first episode turned out and what you'd want more of in the future. So if you have a moment, please drop a comment or shoot me a DM after you've had a chance to check it out. I'd really appreciate hearing what you all think. And yeah, with that, make sure to check out the podcast and Dash tutorials that are coming soon. I hope you have a good one and I'll catch you in the next one.